wanted to show you, to keep things simple, some people say I repeat myself too much, I got the links below for these. These are charts of my own creation. Um, all lenses can be dropped into these three categories. I've got this chart and a few other charts. Let's uh, first talk about this one. We have only three different groups and categories by which lenses must be judged, and they can't be judged outside of that group. There's a reason for that, because lenses fall into three classes of judgment. I've spoken before in a prior video. Wide-angle prime lenses, anything under 28 millimeters, basically starting at 24 and going under. Different set of criteria for lens construction, high element count. Classic prime lenses, 28 millimeters and above, all the way to 600. Simplicity is divinity, however, Nikon and some other idiot uh, lens manufacturers, what they're doing is they're taking all the magic, they're sucking all the magic out of classic prime lenses, and they're designing them with a lot of the characteristics of bad zoom lenses. It's like, why would I buy like a 100 millimeter so-and-so lens when it has horrible characteristics like, uh, say, a, you know, uh, a 70 to 200, if I were to stick a 70 to 200 at 100 mil, I mean, the characteristics are bad. It's like, not only is this lens insanely expensive, but I mean, it renders just as bad as like a 24 element 70 to 200 when placed at 105 millimeters. That's the amazing part. Now, obviously, that's only an f2.8, not like an f1.4, but all things being considered, the rendering and the output's the same, and that is really bad. That is the horrible weak link and the failure and the philosophy of current lens designers is that they are taking what has always been now for decades, the magic of a prime lens, a fundamental prime lens at 28 millimeters and above, and they have bleached all the magic out of it to satisfy the measure baiters, which are demanding... Uh, absolute highest resolution, perfect corner-to-corner, -corner, perfect uh, lack of vignetting. Those things come at a cost, and the cost is the soul of the lens. You know, you see, prime lenses, 28 millimeters and above, they had a special soul and a magic. People use these for specific reasons. There's a reason why I own a lot of really neat old prime lenses. A lot of them are low element count, too, by the way. They are magical of their own right. You know, if you're going to bleach the piss out of the lens and sterilize it to satisfy, satisfy these measure baiters on these uh, hissing cockroach photography forums and uh, nonsense websites like uh, bsmark.com and uh, people that only read MTF, you know, you're making a huge mistake. Nikon is making, and Nikon's not the only people, Nikon is making an insanely stupid ass mistake. So that's the second category. The third category, which has to be in, judged independently, are zoom lenses for various obvious reasons. None of these lenses can be uh, judged, uh, um, you know, cross a board because then it uh, you run into a different uh, judgment criteria. And because wide wides and ultra wide primes, they have to be judged on a different scale and a different basis than. Uh, than uh, normal uh, classic prime lenses and zoom lenses obviously can't be judged on the other two. Here's some other charts that I've uh, placed up. I've talked about before, this is my own creation. All lenses can be judged on this empirically. RPG, BCD, resolution phase gained, bandwidth, uh, construction, and drive. When we're talking about phase, we're talking about uh, control of uh, dispersion, chromatic aberration, so on and so forth. Gain is obviously the native uh, lens gain in the transmission. Bandwidth, we're talking about saturation and efficiency from near to far frequency, visible, visible EMR, electromagnetic radiation, i.e. visible light. Um, construction is self-evident, drive is self-evident. Just because you've got 10 different 35 millimeters doesn't mean anything. They all have totally different drives. So there's linear drive motors, it'd be like triple linear motors, quad quadruple linear motors. They could be screw drive lenses, silent wave motors, micro uh, drive uh, motors, micro motor drives. So just because you say you have one camera, that doesn't mean anything. Like, well, the camera's really fast, yeah, but there also has to be a fast lens. This camera is insanely fast, but if you stick an old damn slow Fuji lens on it, like the 27 millimeter 2.8 or uh, the uh, the 35 millimeter 1.4, slow. Camera's fast. You also have to have a fast lens to go with it. This is undeniable. This is irrefutable. Uh, I got the links for these charts below. I've already talked about this before in a prior video. The spheres of lens rendering, art logos versus artifice and construct. 
Um, pretty self-evident from the prior video. We also have to talk about uh, high purpose versus a generic purpose. Uh, high purpose are, uh, are a specific uh, attribute to focus lens for design. Generic purposes are mostly zooms. There's a few uh, primes in there like the 50mm 1.8D. They're just general generic uh, prime lenses. Um, most, uh, not all, but most uh, high purpose lenses are prime lenses and some zoom lenses like the, the Trinity lenses and like say the 200 to 500 high purpose which is basically a birding lens. However, people use it all for, for sports and action. Trinity lenses like 2472 8, 7200 to 2.8, 14 to 24 Nikkor, 15 to 30 Tamron. So we have two uh, divisions or classes of lenses. We have generic class and we have high purpose or professional class lenses. Okay. Generics are basically the, the standard douchebag zoom lens <laughs> that comes with your your dinky camera or like in, each and every ultra zoom and uh, super zoom lens. That's not to say that you can't use them professionally and get professional results. I'm not saying that at all. But there are two distinct classes. We have high purpose lenses and uh, generic lenses. Instead of uh, got the... Uh, I thought that there was uh, some more charts than that. Yeah, high purpose. No, that was it. Resolution phase again. So, anyway, those are the charts. And uh, just remember, take a look at the links for these. And if you can keep this in your head, that also helps you in making a really good lens choice. But uh, this is uh, the way of uh, classifying all lenses, the divisions of which there are two, the two spheres of uh, lens uh, considerations, empirical judging criteria and artistic judging criteria. Uh, the six empirical criteria for judging any lens, RPG, BCD. And then the three totally different classes of lenses, each of which must only be judged within their own class. Um, because each one has totally different, unique characteristics by which it falls on a different scale of judging uh, than the other classes of lenses. So, Because people get confused about that. It's like, how are you praising a low element uh, count prime lens, say 50 millimeter, versus, a, and at the same time, also praising a high element count uh, ultra wide prime, like the 16 millimeter Fuji or the 20 millimeter 1.8G, so on and so Those fall outside of a different class. Below 28 millimeters, everything is off the scale in a completely different sphere of judging. It just has to be that way. And zooms, of course, are their own category, too. So. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.